Today I'm going to show you how to design and make these custom buttons. Let's start by downloading the template. This can be found on Schoology or attached to the video. Select download and this will go to the downloads folder on your iPad. Now I'm going to open up Photoshop. We're going to import open and we're just going to open up the template that we just downloaded. With this template, you can see where to keep the vital information. We want to make sure that the text and the image is inside the 2.625 image area. Everything else will just be cut off. I'm going to insert an image, drag the corners to scale it, but use this touch shortcut to scale it with the proportions of the image locked. Then view your template to make sure that the image is going to fit inside the image area, which is the dashed line. We're going to cut out the background of our image. Go to Selection Tools and select Select Subject. Then select Mask. You can see this little icon has been added to our layers, which is really just showing you a layer mask. Anything inside the white will show through. Anything behind the black will be masked out. You can actually paint in and out this layer mask by going to your paintbrush and painting this in. You just have to make sure that you are selecting this part of the layer icon, which is the mask itself. I can use the keyboard shortcut X to go back and forth between white and black on my paintbrush. Just make sure you are on the layer mask and you can carefully paint out the background. You can zoom in and change your brush size and also the feather of the edge of the brush and really carefully edit out the background. Photoshop's subject select does a really good job when you have an image with a really clean background. So I'm just going to go with what it gave me originally. Now I'm going to add a new layer. With the ellipse selection tool, I'm going to create an ellipse that is roughly my image area right on this new layer. If I use the touch shortcut, I can touch and slightly drag and this will constrain the circle as well as make it concentric to the center point as I drag. Line it up with your three inch button template as best you can. And now I'm going to unhide my image and select that layer. And now I'm going to select mask. This has created a circular window, which is masking off what you would see on the button. If you move this around the selection tool, you're actually just moving the layer. What we have to do is double click the layer icon and then select convert to layers. This will now be able to be expanded and you can see all the different layer masks that have been created and you can actually move the image, which was a square, around underneath this circular window. If you have to transform it, I can now scale the image to make it fit inside the circular layer mask. Now that this is complete, I'm going to go find another image that I can composite into this document. There's some great stock websites out there like unsplash.com where I can find an image of, for this example, the White House or the Capitol building. If you don't like these stock websites, you can simply just do a Google search and edit your filter settings to give you Creative Commons license images only. Then you can also edit the type of image you get as well as the size. I'm going to change mine to large, that way the quality of the image is the best I can find. This image looks good. I'm actually going to click it and download the image instead of just right clicking and saving. Now I can insert this image. And just a reminder, layers are stacked from top to bottom. So if you want this to be in the background, you just have to drag the layer down. But first I'm gonna scale it, make it fit how I want and select done. Now I can just reorder my layers and put this underneath the figure, but it's still inside the circular layer mask. Now I'm going to edit the appearance of my images by adding adjustment layers. Select the plus sign, adjustment layers, and I'm going to choose black and white for the first one just to show you how this works. This is going to add the effect to the layers beneath it in the layers order. So if I drag the order of my layers, it's only going to add the black and white filter to the background layer. Let's try a different one. Let's add a hue and saturation effect. And now I'm going to add colorize and I can actually change the color of my figure. I kind of want to make it look patriotic. So I'm going to play around with some of these hues, the saturation. I can also modify the lightness. There are also a ton of different blending modes, which changes the way that this color or hue saturation lays over my image. I'm going to go for color for this effect, but I recommend going down through and finding the one that fits your needs. This adjustment layer can also be modified just like a layer mask. I could erase or paint out parts of this image, or I could use this gradient and basically 
do a fade erase of how this is laying over my image. So I'm gonna try to make half of it red and half of it blue by adding this gradient over the adjustment layer. Before I get too far into my linear gradient, I'm gonna go back and I'm going to duplicate my adjustment layer by selecting this symbol and then duplicating it. Now I'm going to make one of them red and one of them blue. At any time, I can always go back and adjust the hue, the saturation, or the lightness of any of these adjustment layers. Now I'm gonna hide the one and add my gradient. If this happens, that's because you didn't select the actual adjustment mask. Go back and be very careful in your layers panel. Select the icon just like a layer mask before you add the gradient, and then it should do what you expect. You can click multiple times to get the gradient just right. Now that I have the blue fade, I'm going to come up to the red layer, unhide it, and add a gradient over this one. It's revealing part of that blue gradient underneath while it's showing you the red. Try multiple effects, and you can always export these as separate PNGs and try them in your button design. Just make sure that you turn off your template layer before you export the PNG, and also beware of this export unsuccessful. Make sure it gives you a green notification, that way it's actually in your files. I'm considering the overall design of my button as I change the color of the photo, and I'm just trying to make it fit together aesthetically. This time my export was successful, and now I'm ready to take this image into Illustrator. Create a new document, change the units to inches, and then make it three and a half by three and a half. Start by inserting your template, and then open up the layers and delete the white background that comes with it. That way it stays out of your way. With the direct selection arrow, select the template, open up properties and lower the opacity. I'm gonna keep this right on top of my design as I work. Lock the template layer, and now we're gonna create a new layer for the image. Drag the image below the template. Make sure you collapse layer one before you do. And now we're gonna insert the PNG that we just edited of our figure. Use the selection arrow to scale your image to make it fit inside the template however you want. And just like Photoshop, Illustrator has a touch shortcut that you can touch and drag. I'm gonna add a new layer, drag it to the bottom, and this is where I'm going to insert a different background. Instead of using the photo of the White House, I'm gonna be doing more of a graphic version. So I'm gonna use this vector version I found, and I'm gonna download this just like I did the image previously, except I'm gonna now modify it in Illustrator. Go back to the Illustrator app and insert this file into this new layer. I could scale it down by dragging the corners with the selection arrow, or I could just open up the properties panel and just make it three and a half by three and a half. Just make sure this lock constraint icon is checked. I could also drag it in place, but I'm just going to use the horizontal and vertical align tool. Try to keep your layers organized and titled. Collapse them as you don't need them and lock the ones that you wanna make sure you don't modify. Add a new layer for the shape design for the background. Use the ellipse tool and I'm going to fill it this blue color at first and I'm gonna use the constraint tool to make sure it stays a circle and then just go to the properties panel to make it exactly three and a half by three and a half. Use the align tool to make it vertically and horizontally center. And now I'm just gonna hit duplicate twice. That way I have three circles the exact same size. The one I want blue, but now I'm gonna make the one red. I can use the color wheel or I can select here and actually type in the hex code if I know exactly what color I wanna make it. Temporarily hide the red and blue circles, and this third circle I'm going to make white, and I'm going to scale it down. I'm gonna be using the Shape Builder tool to actually make more complex shapes. So I'm gonna use a smaller version of the circle at about two inches to chop out part of the red and blue circle. But first, I actually want a stripe to go through it as well. So I'm gonna make a filled rectangle, about one inch tall, and I can just change the width to be the same size as the button at 3.5 inches. Center align it with the rest of the shapes. And now I'm going to use the touch shortcut on my screen to select the rectangle and the white ellipse. Now I can grab this icon to combine the shapes. I'm going to select combine all and then convert to paths. Drag this white shape up above the red and blue circle. And now I'm going to chop this white shape out of the red, but before I do, I wanna duplicate it so I can do the same thing to the blue one. 
I'll just do this in sequential order. So first I'm gonna select the top white and the red, select combine shapes, and this time select minus front, convert to path. As you expand these layers, you can see there are now two semicircles. I'm just going to swipe from the left to right to delete the bottom one and then hide the red shape for now. now I'm gonna repeat the same process to do the blue shape. Select shape builder, minus front, convert to path. This time I'm gonna delete the top side of this. And as I reveal my layers, you can see what the result is. Now I'm gonna use the blue building vector and combine it to the bottom. But first, you can see how it kind of overlaps with the windows. And so I'm gonna use a duplicate of the building to actually chop away some of the blue semicircle. So I'm just gonna use minus front, convert to path, and with the direct selection arrow, I can actually select just these small shapes that are part of my layer group. Select them and just grab this little trash can in the contextual menu. Now I can show the original copy of the building and I'm going to combine it with the blue semicircle. Select combine shapes. Now if you see this, you have to change your selection arrow back to the selection tool and select combine all. Convert to path. With the direct selection tool, I can still edit this shape by just selecting the individual points and selecting the trash can twice to delete that semicircle. Now I'm gonna make a larger circle to mask out the little parts of the building that goes beyond where I want it to. So I can select both of these shapes and use intersect this time. However, you can see I don't actually want this green color. I wanna preserve my blue. So I'm first gonna change the color of my ellipse by using this eyedropper tool to the original blue color that I created. Now that they're the same color, I can select both shapes in the layers panel and use the combine shapes tool with the intersect option. Select convert to path to make it permanent. Now I can go back through and start revealing some of my other designs to see how this is looking. Now I'm gonna create a new layer for the text. To create text in the Illustrator app, you have to have a circle or a path to put it on. So I'm gonna first create a circle. I'm gonna to try to make it fit just inside the design window here. So that would make mine about two and a quarter inches. I need to duplicate this ellipse so that way I can do this two separate times. Now I'm going to just use the text tool, drag out a box and type out my text. In the properties panel, I can change the font type. I'm gonna use this Rockwell because I want a nice serif font to go with my design, but go down through, find a font that matches your design aesthetic, and then obviously change the size and color. Here's where you can change the size. Just click this open, you can actually scroll down through, or actually type in the point value. Make sure the text is selected to change the color. I'm gonna go with a white, and I'm gonna use the selection tool to move it roughly in place for now. With this contextual menu, I can also change the size here by just dragging this icon, but I also wanna make sure that it's center with my paragraph, and this paragraph text window is kind of bulky, so I'm gonna change the text container right here. Now I can move it right over the arc, and I'm gonna use my touch shortcut to select the text as well as this green circle, and then grab type, type on path. Now it's a little hard to see, so I'm gonna hide the template for now, and then just drag these scrolls around. I'm gonna use the kind of red semicircle to give myself roughly center, and I can still scale that original ellipse to make it fit just inside that template window. You can also change the text size in the contextual menu, as well as the spacing to make it look just right. Temporarily lock this text so I don't mess it up as I make the text for the bottom portion of my design. I'm gonna type it out just like before and change the color. If you have an issue selecting the text and the circle together, when you select the selection tool and you use the touch shortcut, a better option is just to select it using the layers. So expand your layers, select the text and the shape, and then come back into your type options and select type on path. Now again, it's kind of difficult to see with all of the different design assets, so you can always hide these layers to make it a little easier for you to work. 
There's also a couple other type on path options where you can do a sender and descender, as well as above and below the path itself. So play with it, make sure you move these around to get it just right before you move on to the next step. I'm gonna add a few other design elements Luckily there's a star tool built right into Illustrator, but you could obviously add any other vectors. You could hand draw your own vectors and just try to make them aligned as best you can using the template. And then you can also mirror by using this flip button right here. I'm just gonna move it across and give this a little bit more flair. This is looking pretty good. I'm gonna hide the template to give myself a better view. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna add a new layer. And I'm gonna add a textured image that I found. This is just textured metal. And I'm gonna scale it up because I just wanna use the white portion of it over my image. I'm gonna scale it really large, even if it sticks beyond. And I'm gonna put this over top everything but the template. Then I'm gonna open up properties and change my blending mode to multiply. Now you can see it kind of looks like a worn button. And now I'm gonna just create another layer and create a circular mask to chop out everything that's extra. So make it the same size as your button at three and a half by three and a half, center align it. And now I'm going to zoom out and with the selection tool, I'm gonna to try to select everything with a window select by just dragging a box. If you see these little lock icons, that means there are several layers that are locked. You wanna unlock these first to so reselect Grab the object and make clipping mask. Now it's masking out everything just like we did in Photoshop. I think that texture is a little bit strong, so I'm gonna go into my mask preview, find the image layer, and just lower the opacity of it just a little bit. Now select the send, publish export, export as, and change your format to PNG and make sure that the background is set to transparent and select export. I'm gonna save it to my files, but eventually we're gonna also save it to your images. So you could have done that in this step as well. Ensure that it's saved to your files and then open it and also save to your images. We want to print this with an actual size in mind. So if you're printing from a desktop, I'd recommend a PDF format, but since we're doing this from our iPad, it tends to scale to our school printers. So I'm gonna insert this into a Word document and just drag the corner and make it exactly 3.5. Select send and then print. Make sure that it's to the school network printers and the paper size is set to letter. Go to the color printer and log in and print your document. Now we can roughly cut our file to size. I recommend measuring it first before you go through this, just to make sure it's still 3.5. There are four parts to making your button. The graphic, the shell, the backer, and the mylar. Our butt machine has a hole punch on the top, so slide in your roughly cut image, line it up, and then push forward on the handle. Don't forget to remove your trash. It's very easy for two shells to be stacked really tight together, so make sure you only have one or else you risk jamming the machine. Place the backer convex side up, place your graphic on top, and then slide in your mylar. Lift up the handle and slide the base through. Place the backer and ensure that it is aligned vertically. Press down on the press, slide the base through, press down again. And just like that, you went from design to a finished button.